All right, great. So uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to our CAE, which uh, this week is also uh, organized with the CET department. Uh, so it's my great pleasure to introduce you today to our speaker, uh, Dr. Mohamed Giyashian, who is or was a PhD student um, in our department in civil architectural engineering, working with Dr. Barbarigos. So his research interests uh, lie in areas of structural engineering, hurricane impacts, coastal engineering, uh, wave structure interaction, and nature-based solutions. So I think what he's gonna tell us about today has to do with this, all of these items actually, um, or, or that's how it sounds to me, uh, structural morphogenesis of green-gray coastal infrastructure. So Mohammed, thank you for being here and the floor is yours. Thank you so much for introduction. I uh, appreciate you. Hello, everyone, and uh, good morning. Uh, as uh, Mohammed Riasian, I'm a, a PhD. I was a PhD student. I just defended my dissertation 10 days uh, ago. And today, I have the pleasure to present my PhD research, which I have done during this uh, last four years. So the topic of my research is structural morphogenesis of green gray coastal infrastructures paradigms for shoreline protections. We've been doing this research uh, under the supervision of Dr. Barbarigos and also Dr. Brian House, uh, professors at the University of Miami. So here we start with the motivation of our research and the significance that we did this uh, research study during my PhD. First of all, I want to draw your attention to the NOAA, to a graph from NOAA National Center of Environmental Information for US. So here the graph shows the time series of number of natural disasters have ever happened in the United States since 1980. And at the left, you see the y-axis shows the number of disasters on the right is the cost of these natural disasters that have ever happened. As you can see, the number of disasters are increasing that could be due to the climate change and all the consequences. But the most important thing is that among all these natural disasters, the green, blue, and the orange bars, which are uh, corresponding to the severe storms, tropical cyclone, and flooding are among the most costliest natural disaster that are happening and they're growing faster these days. So therefore, there is a great need for protecting our coastal regions, especially so vulnerable coastal regions like South Florida, the states around the Gulf, against these future natural disaster that's going to be very costly for those neighborhoods. Generally, for protecting the shorelines, we have two options in the, uh, in the common practice that we can use. The first and the very traditional option is to using, uh, using man-made or gray solution for protecting the shorelines. This can be included as concrete seawall structures to concrete breakwaters, groins, and all other infrastructures that we protecting to dissipate the wave energy and protecting the shoreline from flooding. On the other hand, there is also kind of a little bit newer solutions which, are, which were existing before, but right now we're implementing in the game, which are nature-based or green solutions, which is using a vegetation cover in order to protect the shorelines against flooding and uh, wave impacts that could be including coral reef structures or mangrove structure or marshes. However, these two nature-based solutions and gray infrastructures have pros and cons. So some of them, accompanied with the high cost of construction, some of them accompanied with the long time for construction, for example, nature-based solution, and the gray infrastructure are usually uh, uh, subjected to other performance issues that are happening and then can, be, uh, can eventually cause to collapse of the structure or structure failure. Therefore, in our research, we are focusing on integrating man-made and green solution together to come up with eco-engineered solution 
that can be efficient in terms of wave energy dissipation and coastal protection and also biocompatible to the environment. So not only protecting the shorelines, but also providing a good hospitable environment for marine life to thrive. So our main research, our main focus for doing an eco-engineering solution for coming up with new uh, eco-engineering, let's say green and gray solution is focusing to using coral reef structures and incorporating our engineering uh, knowledge in order to come up with an enhanced level of protection by this nature-based solution. At the second step, we're using the, uh, the man-made structures, uh, the common man-made structure for protecting the shorelines, which are sea walls, and then again incorporating the nature-based criteria onto that design in order to also coming up with another green gray infrastructure for protecting the shorelines. So here, for reaching our goals of this research study, we define it four different uh, objectives. So first of all, for the core reef structure, we needed to evaluate their performance. So we developed a testing methodology for evaluating the performance of the structure in terms of wave energy dissipation and wave height reduction. So therefore, after that, we could quantify the relative contribution of corals in wave energy dissipation. And then we develop an efficient, again, efficient hybrid artificial coral incorporating engineering into the design of the nature-based solution to and assessing their impacts for having a better performance of this nature-based solution, which is blended with engineering knowledge. And at the end, we also incorporate the biocompatibility uh, criteria in the design of the common shoreline protection system, which are seawall structures to not only protect the shorelines, but also creating a habitat, uh, like, providing a good habitat for marine life. In the absence of design guidelines, and the lack of direct measurements and also lack of accurate analytical solution, we have been, we done our test in, uh, we, we, we explore our research through experimental testing at search structure atmosphere interaction facility at the University of Miami. So here is a video of the sustained facility that we have that we did all pretty much all the experiments over there. So here, the sustained facility can generate wave and uh, wind uh, simultaneously and creating the hurricane conditions up to category five. So in, uh, having this facility provide the opportunity for us to evaluate the performance of our physical models under the direct impact of wave and wind actions. Now going back to the first objective, coral reef, we wanted to see how we can quantify, how we can develop our method for it. So first of all, coral reefs have been shown that can dissipate wave energy, but they can, they can dissipate wave energy until 97%. However, this is uh, depending on different parameters that uh, 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 include the structural characteristics of the coral reef structures like uh, coral cover, coral reef beads and reef profile, and also the hydrodynamic conditions such as wave conditions and water depths. The idea for wave uh, reduction energy of, because of the coral reefs can be simplified in this equation, wave energy flux. So the wave energy by the coral reef structure can be dissipated through two terms, wave breaking and bottom friction. Wave breaking happens when the water, when the waves come into the shore in the shallower area and they collapse and they dissipate their energy. However, there is another term, which is bottom friction, which can also happen in the, because of the interaction between the waves and the bottom due to the friction effects. And then the ones with our two terms of wave dissipation were calculated, we can quantify the effect of coral reefs. This is generally simply to understand. However, these two terms all depend on different parameters that are not easy to quantify and needs a lot of, uh, and includes a lot of parameters. 
for example, for the wave breaking, we have two important parameters that we're discussing in the literature. One of them is breaking coefficient, and other one is the breaking index that are different for different characteristics of the structure and also water condition and needs to be quantified or experimentally investigated. On the other hand, for the wave for the wave dissipation by friction, we have water friction coefficients that are not constant for every structure and also hydrodynamic conditions. Usually there is no, re I mean, um, the, because of there is no research for quantifying the effects of the core reef structure uh, in terms of bottom friction, they were uh, estimated by comparing it to the, uh, uh, to the similar sandy bottom of the sea. However, these all are depending on the structure characteristic and needs to be quantified by itself. Therefore, our research was done through experimental testing in sustained facility in order to experimentally quantify these parameters and come up with the idea how to quantify these effects and using the wave energy dissipation and incorporating into the design of these core reef structures. So first of all, we developed a testing methodology. At first, we built a core reef structures from, uh, from a scaled model of a prototype uh, projects in South Florida. We added the stack on corals on the top of the model that we have. So the model includes a reef with a trapezoidal geometry that is, uh, that is scaled from the uh, prototype condition. And then in order to having the corals on it, we added the stack on, branching stack on corals on the top of the models. The branching stack on corals are the most uh, prevalent species of the corals in South Florida. That's why we use it. We wanted to understand how, how we can get the bottom friction from these uh, coral species. Now, in order to evaluate the performance of the system, we did our analysis on the wave data, uh, on the wave data that we collected throughout this experiment. So we had the measurements of the wave heights before, across, and after the structure. Then we can capture what was the incident wave energy that was coming to the structure and what will happen to that and how much the wave energy was dissipated. The testing conditions that we did in the experiments in sustained facility were defined considering the full similarity between a prototype reef in South Florida and the reef model that we had it in the sustain lab, in sustain laboratory. Here is the result that we got it from the developing of first step of our experiments. So at the right, you see the wave height reduction graphs and at the bottom of that uh, graph, you see the wave energy dissipation, which can be calculated by having the wave height, uh, which is shown in the, at the bottom of this slide. So, at the general view, we can see the effects can be quantified very successfully here. So we had our testing conditions in two water depths, 55 centimeters of the water and 65 centimeters of the water. And then we did our experiments for the reef structure without any corals and then with adding the corals. The black bars is the contribution of the reef structure in the wave height reduction or the wave energy dissipation. And the white bar is corresponding to the contribution of the corals, which is due to the bottom friction. So as you can see, all these parameters could be uh, quantified. And then the, this testing uh, methodology could give us results to see how much the effect can be contributed can be attributed to each terms of the wave energy dissipation. However, the wave energy dissipation is different in different conditions. So generally, as you can see, the way in when the, when the water depth is uh, shallower, we have higher wave height reduction or higher wave energy dissipation compared to the deeper water. And also the contribution of the corals and the well reef structures in breaking and the uh, friction are not similar in every condition, which we knew it. So we can quantify it. 
So the first step was successful. And then the second step started. So in the second step, we define a wider range of experiments in order to quantify the effects of bottom friction and wave breaking in different variety of conditions. And then eventually quantifying the parameters that we needed for designing this nature-based solution. So again, the testing, the testing conditions were defined based on the full similarity uh, scale between the experiments that we had it in the tank compared to the structure in the prototype condition. We, in this way, we had three water depths. We had three water, uh, three water depths of 55, 65, and 75. And then we had different uh, wave heights for each conditions. And then also the wave period was changing. The coral density, the coral cover was the similar, was the stack on corals with the similar cover percentage. Now that the results from this phase were compared again. So at the left, we see the wave transmission rates and the right is the wave transmission rate in the deeper water. As you can see, the points are corresponding to the breakwater and the breakwater with corals. So the transmission is basically the wave height that what the transmission rate is the wave height after the structures over the incident wave height. So if you have more transmission rates, meaning that the structure didn't affect, this, uh, affect the waves as much as we wanted. So the more transmission we have, the less wave dissipation energy we get. So as you can see, there's a difference between the breakwater and the breakwater with corals. And these differences are not similar in every condition and it's changing. And of course, in the deeper water, it's less. So the difference between the breakwater with corals is less than uh, compared to the shallow water, meaning that in the shallow water, the interaction uh, between the corals that caused the friction was higher compared to the, uh, compared to the uh, deep water. And then wave energy dissipation was also calculated by subtracting the transmitted energy from the incident wave energy. And we can get our wave energy dissipation for all the conditions that we have. And the contribution of the corals can be again calculated by subtracting the uh, breaking effects, which is shown by the gray bars here from the total incident wave energy. Then coming back to the terms that we, do, we had in the literature for defining the wave uh, dissipation energy due to the bottom friction, we can compare uh, the results and get all the friction factors that we have. So basically in this way, we could uh, we could put aside the breaking the those the three parameters that we wanted to have for breaking waves. So the breaking waves were completely separated, and now we have the friction coefficient from the second term that we can quantify, which is plotted in these graphs with respect to the Rayleigh's numbers based on the condition that we have it in the experiment. So as you can see, the wave friction uh, coefficients caused by the coral reefs the structures are, uh, are decaying with the Reynolds number. And when in a very high turbulence flows, the wave friction coefficients are not comparable to the flows that we have it before that. But typically all the conditions that we have in the prototype on the real scale uh, field is uh, so, uh, is summarized between the Reynolds number range between 4,000 to 40,000. 40, so basically, this is the area that is more our most interest. And then we can see the uh, wave friction coefficients are not constant and are changing. By doing these experiments, we can get the exact friction coefficient by each condition that we have and then use it to define our wave friction uh, dissipation and use it in our design. Now, in the in the in the next step of this research, once we got the testing methodology and then quantify the parameters that we needed for the design, now we need to explore more. We need to see that one that the friction coefficient that we defined it before how can change if we use different core species or how it can change in different coral coverage because 
the reef structures does not have all the uh, does, does not usually have the highest coverage of like stack on corals and it is changing and some of the reef structures are not uh, having the core stack horns or uh, any other specific type and they can be a composite coral uh, covers from, for example, stack on corals to uh, brain corals to any other species of the coral. Therefore, in other brain, in other uh, coral species, which are, uh, uh, which are again prevalent in South Florida, that are boulder brain corals were investigated in this phase of the experiments. So we added another species of the corals to get more uh, uh, to, uh, to, to develop our methodology and expand our results to another type of the corals. And then also the core cover was changed. The core cover was changed from low, intermediate, and high percentage in, the, in terms of the population of the corals on the reef in order to explore these effects with respect to the core coverage. And then after that, we wanted to have more enhanced wave energy dissipation. So we incorporated two eco-engineering reef design besides the coral that we have at the top of the structure in order to further dissipate wave energy and getting the best, uh, getting the uh, uh, more optimized performance. The testing methodology was again similar. We had the water measurements in order to calculate our wave heights and then calculating the wave energy dissipation and calculating the wave transmission rate. So here, you can see on the left, uh, the testing uh, that we had at the sustained facility. At the top, the brain corals were populated on the reef structure that we have, the trapezoidal reef. And at the bottom, we had the stack on corals that were again populated on the top of the reef. We defined the three Coral cover, then a coral cover percentage based on the, each coral species that we have. However, the coral coverage were not exactly similar between these two species because of the availability of space for putting them. So, therefore, we had different coral coverage for each coral species that we use. However, we could use the numbers that we have, for example, in the low coverage of the brain coral, we can compare it with the intermediate coverage if you wanted to compare the results. And then uh, also the rugosity of the model uh, with corals were again quantified by the number of the corals that we have on the reef. The test uh, condition again was defined based on the similarity of the food scale between the uh, model that we had in sustain and the reef model. I should mention that the, also the reef scale uh, of the experiments were one to 10 compared to the prototype reef. So here's the results from the wave energy dissipation with respect to the wave stiffness for each coral species, coral reef model that we have. Here for the brain corals, again, we had three uh, cover percentage. We had low cover, intermediate, and high cover. And then the results also were com compared with the reef structure without any corals, which are shown with this uh, X points. So as you can see, there is a difference that we know between the uh, wave energy dissipation for the model that had corals on it compared to the models that didn't have coral. However, the cover also is playing another role, and it shows that the more cover that we have for the wave uh, for the hybrid for the model coral reef model, we get more wave energy dissipation, and it is shown in every condition that we had, which is altering by this parameter h over uh, wavelengths. So h is the wave height and lambda is the wavelength. The wave stiffness is the parameter that we had in the horizontal axis. However, these differences between the wave energy dissipation of uh, core reef model in different core cover is not always similar. And as we have more wave height, as we have a higher wave heights, like this part of the graph, this difference decays more compared to the this part. So here we have more differences between the model without the core and also between the models with different core cover compared to there. Meaning that 
the more wave height that we have, most of the wave energy will be dissipated through the, through the breaking, wave breaking, and the friction having less effect. Therefore, definitely, there is less differences between the uh, wave energy dissipation of these three configuration of the coral. The results for the stack on coral is also plotted here with similar axis of this plot. So we can see we have higher, trans, uh, relatively higher dissipation rate compared to, those, uh, compared to the brain coral that we can see as a general view. And also similar trend was uh, observer that we can have more wave friction from the corals on the lower wave heights compared to the higher wave heights. And also the differences are uh, visible between the low coral uh, cover to high coral cover. Then we did the comparison to see the effect of coral compositions uh, in the dissipation of the wave energy uh, by coral reef models. So we used two similar coral coverage of brain corals 10% and stack coral 10%. And then we compare the wave energy dissipation between these two coral models. So as you can see, at the left side, we have the most differences as we could imagine before, because is, this is the area that most wave energy is dissipated by the wave friction. And we have more wave energy dissipation caused by friction by the stack on corals at the similar cover, meaning that the roughness, the surface roughness of the stack on coral species are different than the brain corals, which is very important result for us. So if you wanted to design for the future, the stack, the, the friction effects are diff, diff, totally different between the stack on branch and coral and the brain coral. Again, this another graph shows the differences again with another similar coral cover. As you can see, again, the stack on corals have better performance in terms of wave friction effect. Now, again, going back to the calculation that we had and the energy flux that is dissipated by the friction coefficient, we can again show all the friction coefficient uh, that were calculated based on each condition and physical characteristic of the system that we had it with respect to the Reynolds number. So at the left, you see the friction coefficients compared to the, rain, the with respect to the reverse Reynolds number for, uh, for the stack on corals and the right, we can see it for the brain coral. So generally the trend is that it's decreasing again, like what we had before in the high turbulent flow, we have less friction in every conditions that we have. However, this is the area of the main interest. This area of that we have most conditions in the real scale. So here we can get our friction coefficients based on the uh, experiments result that we have. And it, as you can see, the friction coefficients are higher cover, uh, pro stack on corals in all types of covers compared to the uh, brain corals. Now, once we got the effects of the bottom friction in terms of the wave energy dissipation. Now we, the idea, this next idea is to incorporate in the eco-engineering design of the reef into the uh, core reef model to have more enhanced wave energy dissipation. So therefore our hybrid coral reef, artificial coral reef design was defined in a way to introducing complexity and permeability to the structure. So basically the idea of the coral reef is, come up, is coming from the submerged breakwater, which is usually from the regular trapezoidal structures that we have it, uh, as a man-made structures. However, the studies show that introducing permeability or perforation into the design of the submerged structures or sea vault can dissipate more wave energy and have better performance in terms of wave reflection and consequently less erosion effect. Therefore, we came up with the idea of using perforated step hexagonal elements for the design of the reef structures and then do the experiments again with the corals and see the performance. So our, perform so our coral species that we were used in this hybrid coral reef was the 
the winter coral, which was the sarcon corals here, in the highest density that we could have it, highest cover that we could have it because of the experiments. And we populated the model again with the, uh, with the corals and then compare the results, how the results is changing. If you use the solid trapezoidal reef and the porous step reef as a design of this experiment. So here, this is the comparison between the wave energy, wave uh, reflection coefficients between all the two reef designs. So here, you should, you, there is a trapezoidal stack on core reef, and then there is a porous step stack on core reef model. So as you can see, each in each box that I'm going to show, I'm going to talk about it later. We 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 see a thread line for the wave reflection coefficients for the trapezoidal reef and also uh, porous step reef. And in all cases, either in the shallow water, deep water, and in any types of wave stiffness, we have more wave reflection from the trapezoidal reef, which is not ideal for us because the wave reflection cause wave uh, cause uh, erosion at the two of the structure that can uh, eventually uh, cause collapse of the structures. Therefore, introducing this new design into the uh, hybrid core reef structure, we can have less wave reflection and better performance. Now, comparing these boxes, all boxes are with respect to the what one specific water relative water level, which is basically the ratio between the water level over the uh, GT square, which is the wave period of the structures which are the terms that are defined for each kind of conditions that we have. So we can separate the effects of the water level and just see the effects of the wave height changes in each boxes. As you can see, the wave reflection is increasing by the wave height. However, this increase is less for the porous step reef uh, design compared to the, uh, compared to the well, regular trapezoid or reef structure. And the wave reflection is slightly higher in the shallow water compared to the higher depths of water because, of course, the waves are getting more effects in the shallow water compared to the deep water. And then the wave transmission were also compared. The wave transmission were shown that is decreasing by the wave height because what we expected with the wave heights. Uh, basically or uh, the more wave heights we have, they're breaking, uh, uh, the wave breaking would be more. So there would be less transmitted waves. However, there is very slight difference between the trapezoidal reef uh, that we have used commonly for the submerged breakwater and the new design that we had it for the uh, reef design. So the transmission rates are not changing that much. However, the wave reflection are changing very, uh, considerably. Then we can see eventually the wave energy dissipation. The wave energy dissipation basically is by subtracting the incident wave energy from the wave energy caused by reflection and the transmission. Transmission is kind of same, but the reflection is changing. So the more wave reflection we have, the less wave energy dissipation we get. So therefore, for the reef design that we have, for the porous step reef design that had less reflection, we could have more wave energy dissipation, which is desired and ideal for our performance of the structure that we wanted compared to the regular design. Therefore, not only we could have using, using the, uh, higher, the uh, higher optimum coral bottom friction that we have from the stack on branch and corals, but also we can incorporate our new engineering design to the, uh, to the is the design of our reef structure to enhance more wave energy dissipation so we get a better performance. Now, after the third part of the research, we wanted to also use the idea of green structures or green solution for coastal protection into the common design of coastal protection uh, for, uh, for, for the, in, in practice, which are the seawalls. So we know that the seawalls are commonly used for protecting the shorelines. However, they had some problems with them. And then we wanted to use the idea of using green, for, green solution into the design of this 
new common, this the common structure for coastal protection. Uh, there is a very great need for building more coastal infrastructure as I discussed before because of the increasing climate changes and the consequences. However, the designs are not usually uh, desired and not provide the level of protection that we need. And also the gray structures are not really bicompatible compatible. And the studies show that they support less biodiversity and fewer organisms compared to the natural shoreline. And also there are some cons with, uh, with uh, respect to their performance that are uh, mostly the vertical common seawall sea design are subjected to erosion damages that can eventually cause face structure failure. Therefore, we needed to be more efficient in terms of their performance. Now, the idea that we use here is to improving the structure, the performance by increasing the structural complexity of the regular seawall design through adding the perforation to the structures. So the idea that we use it is using hexagonal perforated hollow elements as our seawall structures that are denoted by C hive because the geometry looks like a beehive and since it's in the sea, so we can call it sea hive. These structures are composed of the hexagonal elements. So this, all the modular elements can be interlocked to each other and providing more stability in a group of the structures. And the structure also have holes and perforation allowing more wave energy dissipation again from the literature that we have introducing permeability through the turbulence effects inside the elements. Also the complexity of the structure and the surface, irregular surface of the structure can provide better hospitable environment for marine life to colonize there. This structure were tested again in sustained facility in order to uh, evaluate the performance of this structure in terms of wave energy dissipation and wave reflection reduction. In order to do that, first, we built uh, the structural model with no perforation. Then we added the perforation, which is gradually increasing from the first layer compared to the uh, last uh, layer of the uh, structure, which is solid. And then the results also compare it uh, with the regular seawall design that we have it for the common practice. Here is the experimental platform that we use it in such a facility. So we had our 2D experiments and we had our surf, uh, we had our first solid elements as a structures for seawall system. And then we add in the perform perforation at the next set of the experiments to see the effects of perforation. And then we had also these solid vertical walls that's showing the, uh, that they're representing the vertical common seawall design that we have it for coastal protection in practice. The analysis again was done by comparing the wave heights through the uh, length of this uh, wave tank that we have. And the conditions were defined again based on a scaled model of the prototype condition in seawall in the South Florida. And the effects of the perforation and also you adding the hexagonal geometry where cal uh, calculate. Here's the two graphs that shows the wave reflection coefficient changes with respect to wave stiffness for both shallow and the high deeper water. The most important thing for us is this relative uh, wave, uh, relative uh, water depth, basically the ratio between the water depth over GT square, which is the wave period of the structure, wave period of the experiments. So as you can see, in higher wave periods, which is corresponding to this uh, top boxes, we have more wave reflection compared to the low wave periods, which are on the bottom boxes as a general view, because generally the, wave, uh, the waves with the higher period showed more wave protection compared to the waves with lower wave periods. And then also the wave reflection were changing and reducing by the 
wave heights here. So all these boxes showing that. So meaning that the more wave height that we have, the more wave energy was dissipated through the wave breaking and the wave breaking were reducing the wave reflection. So there were less wave to reflect. But this is the general view for all experiments. What is most important for us to comparing the performance of the solid vertical seawall to the two designs that we uh, propose it in this space. So first, we can see the solid vertical sea walls, which are all the top lines here have significantly higher wave reflection coefficient compared to the other seawall design that we have for solid facet step seawall design and also faceted porous step seawall. And they introduce, and this porous step seawall comparing this with the solid faceted seawall showing that the, again the wave reflection were decreased more which is comparing this lower line and this middle line here in each boxes both in shallow and the deep water so meaning that our proposed design could result in less wave reflection consequently increasing the performance in terms of less erosion for the structure and the results also could quantify the wave reflection by the existing formula that we have for the regular seawall design. So this formula is used usually in, in practice in order to quantify the wave reflection for the vertical seawall designs or a vertical slope seawall designs in practice, which is, for example, this showing the results for the uh, uh, with respect to the conditions that we have, which is defined by surface similarity parameter, and then. We had our wave data experiments and showing that the wave reflection are generally are a lot lesser than the regular compared to the regular seawall design. Then we could quantify and modify the general formula in order to get our experimental co reflection coefficient for this new design that we can use it for the future uh, coastal protection system. And after calculating the wave reflection, wave energy dissipation can be also uh, calculated by subtracting the incident wave energy from the wave reflection. So the more wave reflection we have, the less wave dissipation we could get. Again, if we compare the three configurations of seawalls, this is the common seawall vertical design. This is the solid sea hive system that we have, and it's a perforated sea hive system. So again, the wave dissipation rates for perforated sea hive system is a lot uh, is considerably higher compared to the other design, meaning that the more performance we get it from the uh, structure that we propose it in terms of coastal protection. And also uh, this was a uh, comparably uh, similar trend in the deeper water compared to a uh, similar trend between the old both uh, water depths that we had in the experiment. Now, going back to the objective of the, our research that we have and the way that we address it. First of all, we could develop a testing methodology to quantify and evaluate the performance of the core reef structures if you want to use it as a nature-based solution in terms of wave energy dissipation and wave reflection uh, reduction. And then we could quantify the contribution of the corals and see how this is affecting in terms of the the, the coral species that we use, the coral cover that we have, and then defining and obtaining our friction coefficients for future design. And then we added our eco-engineering solution into the design of this nature-based solution by adding a uh, proposed uh, porous uh, reef design for the, the structure that we had it and enhancing more wave energy dissipation. And then we also use the idea of the green solution into the common uh, gray solution for prote uh, coastal protection, which are seawall designs and having more wave energy dissipation and also providing a good habitat for uh, marine life. In terms, of the, in terms of the experiments, the experiments that we had in sustained facility for the first objective, we could successfully see the effect of the wave breaking and bottom friction as a separate terms that we needed for design of these structures. Then 
comparing all different conditions that we have for the experiments, we could show that the wave energy dissipation can be gained up to 98%, which is in agreement by the literature studies that we had it before. And the core contribution can be also can be, to the, can be uh, up to 56%. However, these values are all dependent on the rip geometry and the water and wave conditions that were explained before. Then the stack on core uh, species were fine to have more uh, uh, surface roughness and also more uh, friction effects in terms of wave energy dissipation. And also the coral cover uh, had to play, uh, uh, was playing another important role for uh, dissipating wave energy. The more cover that we had, the more wave energy dissipation were observed and introducing a porous step reef design into the design of the reef structure was shown to be a better performance in terms of wave energy dissipation and wave height reduction. And again, introducing the complexity to the design of the common seawall systems for coastal protection should have a better performance in terms of wave energy dissipation while providing a potential habitat for marine life. As a general final statement of this research, we can say that <clears throat> our main objective, which was the design of the structures to dissipate wave energy and protect the shorelines while providing a potential habitat for marine life, we could get closer to this idea by using green gray uh, uh, paradigms for shoreline protections and obtaining the required data and the results that we can use it in the absence of design guidelines in order to not only protect the shorelines, but also uh, uh, meeting the biocompatibility criteria. Now at the end, I'm uh, happy to say that our research uh, uh, results and uh, studies could contribute to uh, three pilot projects that are going to be implemented in South Florida for designing of the new coastal protection systems for, uh, in order to reduce the risk of uh, natural disasters in the future. So we have two pilot projects, one of them in North Bay Village and another Miami Beach and the Pompano Beach that are going to start this month for protecting the shorelines, we using the idea of the sea hive, adding the preparation and complexity to the structures as a submerged reef structures in Miami Beach, as a reef raft structures in front of the existing seawall to uh, basically reducing the erosion here and here for reducing the wave uh, energy. And also another project, Pompano Beach, Pompano Beach in order to not only reducing the wave energy, but also adding uh, vegetation cover in order to be more quite compatible in terms of the coastal infrastructure. At the end, I wanted to uh, thank all the uh, scientists and uh, technicians who helped me during this research and my PhD. A special thank to my advisors, Dr. Barbaregos and Dr. House, who helped me through all all the experiments and also all the sponsorships that we had through the experiments. And um, here's a picture of all my uh, journey during this PhD works. And I'm so uh, happy that I'm successfully done with the PhD right now and uh, hopefully can collaborate in the future research project that we have. Thank you again for your attentions. Now I'm more than happy to answer any questions and comments that you have. Thank you.